So I was actually laying down on a patient table in physical therapy and I was complaining of my neck pain but then my chest pain started to get worse. I had chest pain so bad that I thought there was a big huge fat elephant that was bigger than the entire room that was sitting on my chest and that my ribs were going to all get crushed. The, the pain stayed in the mediastinum which houses the esophagus, the trachea, and the heart and it felt like a rod that went from about um, from the thyroid cartilage down to the sternum and it felt like somebody was ringing, ringing out the whole thing. I thought it was my heart actually and I thought that I was going to die. I had 10 out of 10 chest pain. I was clammy. I had sweat beads on my forehead, my hands. The, the palm lines were glistening with sweat and I was in so much pain that I couldn't believe it. So they called 911 and the paramedics came, lovely gentlemen, three of them. One of them popped an 18 gauge IV into my arm, one of them gave me aspirin, and one of them started giving me nitroglycerin once they got my blood pressure. Nitroglycerin is given as a spray under the tongue, sublingual, because the blood supply under the tongue is very high, especially the arterial supply and uh, drugs can get absorbed from there, um, certain ones especially, but nitroglycerin is one of them. Now I want, the reason why I'm making this is because there's millions of people each day that go into emergency rooms for chest pain. And I want to let you know that the protocol for chest pain is pretty standard. It's pretty um, user friendly. You get oxygen in case the heart is not getting enough oxygen. You get aspirin because studies have shown that that de can decrease the severity of a heart attack. You get morphine for pain so that you're not, at an, and that also helps to alleviate air hunger which commonly occurs with chest pain. You also get um, laboratories done. They draw your blood sequentially usually, or maybe one or once or twice or three times um, with a period of time in between. They're checking to see if your heart has been damaged and then has secreted um, troponins and some other cardiac enzymes, heart enzymes into your bloodstream. They will also give you an EKG, very simple, but you should know that a normal EKG can definitely decrease your your awareness of or your worry that it could be a heart attack but it's it's common that people can have a non Q wave uh, MI myocardial infarction and they can have a heart attack and the EKG can look perfectly normal so that has happened it does happen but you, you know otherwise you're going to look for ST segment elevation, ST segment, depression, all the things that the cardiologist teaches you. That's like a whole different lecture. So um, I just wanted to make sure also that if you are a patient walking into an emergency room with chest pain, it should be bam, 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 bam. They, they take your blood, they give you an IV, they give you the nitroglycerin, they give you the oxygen, they give you the morphine, and it's like rote. They do the same thing like thousands of times for every patient that comes in there. And then they wait for the labs to come back and see how you're doing. Well, my labs came back normal, saying, in other words, that there's n my heart has not s sustained any damage and I don't have any leakage of heart enzymes going into my bloodstream. So then was I making it up? Was this 10 out of 10 chest pain just searing through my mediastinum and my esophagus and my it felt like somebody was had their hand inside of my 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 mediastinum and they were just wringing it out. It was just a twisting motion. So while 
some people in the emergency room may not believe it, I will let you know that the a very common diagnosis, if the heart rules out and it's not the heart, then the second thing that you should probably look for is esophageal spasm. I have seen that in the books, I've seen it on the exams, people have said it in their differential diagnosis. I personally have never seen esophageal spasm in any patient. However, I, as a patient, felt esophageal spasm and that is what my diagnosis ended up being. So, in retrospect, when they gave me the sublingual nitroglycerin, that works not only on the heart to relax the heart and, the, and, the, and allow it to get more perfusion to itself, it also relaxes the smooth muscle of the esophagus. So whether you have chest pain coming from your heart or chest pain coming from your esophagus, the nitroglycerin will decrease your blood pressure. It's a vasodilator, a nitrovasodilator. It will, it will cause your peripheral arteries to dilate and thus lower your blood pressure. And um, then it cause some, some pain relief. So the reason why I'm making this video is because I've actually never seen anyone come in with esophageal spasm. And I ended up having esophageal spasm I was not impressed by the emergency room. I had to ask them if they still draw cardiac enzymes or not these days because nobody had done anything for half an hour. And, um, and I was writhing in pain as well as uh, the person across the hall from me was writhing in pain with a broken arm. And it sounded like a haunted house or a PACU, if you're used to anesthesia, it sounded like the recovery room. Like everybody's moaning and groaning in pain. Well, I want to tell you not to do this to somebody who has pain. Do not go up to them and put your face in theirs and go, shh, shh, other people are here, could hear you, shh, that is just wrong. If somebody has pain, you give them something for pain, you don't tell them to be quiet, especially in an emergency room. And if the emergency room isn't giving you morphine for pain, then it seems likely to me that somebody is holding on to it. That's the only explanation. So either somebody just got busted in there for doing morphine, one of the employees there, or somebody got written up for giving too much to somebody, but that doesn't mean that the rest of us have to pay for it. It is normal for you to receive two to four milligrams of morphine IV for chest pain and have that repeated every five minutes until that goes away. The nitroglycerin can be given every five to ten minutes also, especially if your blood pressure is over 120 or 130 systolic. So when you give the nitroglycerin, realize it's going to lower the blood pressure. If, it's, if the pain is from the heart, it will relax the heart. If the pain is from the esophagus, it will relax the smooth muscle in the esophagus. It's in all the exams, on all the board exams, and it's on rounds when you rotate through internal medicine or cardiology. But I want you to know, I never saw anybody with esophageal spasm. I didn't know how incredibly devastating it could be. I really, literally thought I was dying of a heart attack. And the pain was so bad that when I first went into the emergency room that they put me in by myself, I could not even see the walls. I was just cringing and self-absorbed pure pain. And it wasn't until I did receive pain medication that I could like look around me and see what the color the walls were and where the windows were and start, you know, noticing the room that I was in. So don't be, don't be afraid to ask for pain medication and realize that if your cardiac enzymes come out negative and your EKG is negative, 
they, the next two steps after that, if you still have clinical evidence to do the uh, stress test, you know, on the treadmill when you're running, or in my case, or in your case, if you can't run, then they give you um, thallium uh, stress test and they use um, cardiac drug to increase your heart rate. And I never knew everybody gets a headache after this thallium stress test. It, it's a vasodilator, it blows your head up and you feel just absolutely devastated the rest of the day. That test can, is, not, is neither sensitive nor specific. Okay, so if you look over your um, statistics and the things that you've learned, you know that there's true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives. The um, thallium scan is not a great test. It's got it can it's got um, a significant amount of true positives. If you're positive, then it will show up, but the false negative rate is also significant. So if there's still clinical concern and the thallium scan does or does not show anything, the next step after that is what? To take the patient for the state-of-the-art test that everybody uses everywhere, and that's the cardiac angiogram. They're going to cut a, do a cut down in the upper thigh, get into the femoral uh, vessel, and weed a wire up to your heart, inject dye in it, take pictures, and see actually if there's clogged arteries there or not. So that is the state-of-the-art test. Um, that's it in a nutshell, esophageal spasm versus um, myocardial infarction. I just want you to keep in, in, your, in your focus that, especially somebody who walks in with a a, a scar from previous surgery that's near the esophagus. This happened to be spinal stenosis surgery and I had um, esophageal uh, dysmotility for three months after the surgery and I probably will never really be able to swallow normally again but I'm fortunate I got speech study um, people to come in and look at me and look at the way I chew and the way I swallow and they were very very big help and teaching me what I need to eat, how I need to eat it, and that's a whole other lecture too. So I just wanted to do this video so that hopefully nobody will go through what I went through and you can feel confident that if you're asking for pain medication because you're in pain, there's no reason why you should not get it, especially if what you're having is chest pain. So take care, stay healthy, keep up the good work, study hard for your boards, and remember nitroglycerin works both on the cardiac muscle and also on the smooth muscle of the esophagus. Therefore, esophageal spasm is should be in your differential diagnosis for chest pain. Thank you so much. Take care.